I've got a back issue haul to share with you today consisting of mostly 50 cent and dollar books that come from a multitude of local shops. Check it out. Hey everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Chris and this is North Garden Comics. Today I've got a back issue haul to share with you and it's going to be very similar in one key way to what I showed you last week and that is the fact that the books I have are from multiple different sources. I didn't go into one store and buy a hundred back issues. Instead I've got a handful of things from one store, a handful of things from another. So I've just pulled all those together and I'm going to show them as one haul. And so I think I've got books from four different Minneapolis-based stores to share with you today. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Kicking it off here are a stack of books that I picked up at a store called Midway Books. This bookstore is a little bit unique in the sense that it's more of an antique bookstore than it is a comic book store first and foremost. But that being said, they do have a full range, pretty much a full range of new comic books and recent back issues and then some really cool older back issues as well. And it, probably because of the antique bookstore vibe that they have and the inventory that they carry, I've looked through some of the long boxes there and seen some really cool stuff from the 50s and 60s in terms of sci-fi and fantasy and other kinds of old magazines and comic related material that way. Super cool stuff. And even though I'm not collecting it, it's still really fun to look at. But the coolest thing about Midway for me is something I only discovered you know, within the last year. And that is that while they have kind of their main comic book section, right when you come in the door on the main floor, I just recently learned that if you go downstairs, there are probably 20 long boxes of comic books, randomly assorted. Some of them are bagged and boarded, some are not, but everything downstairs is just 50 cents a piece. And that's been a great discovery. I've gone a couple different times to, you know, 50 cent bin dive down there. And I've come home with some cool things. And this book you're seeing in front of you here is the first of this haul from this particular day. This is New Mutants number three. I believe this is volume three. It's not a volume that I'm trying to collect in its entirety. I have done some of the other New Mutant volumes like volume one and volume two and I've done some of the current stuff, but with this volume, so far I've only collected a couple of uh, tie-in issues to other things going on, like a mutant event tie-in issues. But this one I picked up mostly because of the cover. I was saying 99% uh, because it's the cover and, and the character. So Danny Moonstar, super cool character, and that's very intense cover there. But I just thought the art was great on this, so I grabbed issue number three. And then another one, Danny Moonstar on the cover, that's issue number 15, same volume, but again, just random issues that I picked up because I liked the cover art. Going over here to volume of Uncanny X-Force. I think this was volume one of Uncanny X-Force. And this is a volume that I am working on, well, I guess at this point I'm not actively working on it. I think the volume went for 30 some odd issues and I had read in some list of, you know, great X-Men stories about this Dark Angel saga that goes from like issue 11 through 18 or so of this Uncanny X-Force volume. And so I thought, sure, I'll go for it and try to piece that together in the dollar bins. And then I also liked the art on this. Uh, this one is done by Opeña, but I know Isad Ribic did some of the issues as well. So between hearing good things about the story and then the art, I thought that was a great combination and I would try to hunt those down. And on this day, I think I completed the Dark Angel Saga. So I got issue number 14. And then issue number 18. You'll see this one is polybagged and unopened, but I did get two copies of this. So now I can have one to open and read and one that will remain polybagged. There is a variant. I think the variant is indicated by a different color title here on the polybag. And I would love to find that someday. It's either Saad Ribic or Ron Garney or somebody that does a, a cool variant uh, of this issue 18. So that might be one I still try to hunt for. And 
who knows, maybe eventually if I read this, I'll continue to want to collect this volume. But for now, we're looking pretty good on completing that Dark Angel Saga run from Uncanny X-Force. It's just a random issue from Marvel Age that I found. Got this one for two reasons. One, because it's Marvel Age and I loved this title as a kid. The, you know, kind of the official Marvel news magazine. So it's not actually a, a comic with a story. It's got interviews and previews and things like that. But I also got this particular issue because it's got the John Romita Jr. cover art. And I thought that was pretty cool. And then you can see, you know, it's got a special five page preview of Hearts of Darkness and the results of the 1991 Summer Annuals Report Card. So these, these are just a fun, fun group of issues to pick up. So usually when they're cheap, I'll grab them, but extra fun when I like the cover artist as well. Then we've got a couple issues from an IDW title. This is Stormwatch. I don't know much at all about this title other than I've been going back recently looking at early image titles and runs and trying to piece things together either that I started then and didn't complete or things that when I look back now just look cool to me and Stormwatch is one of that example where I never collected it I don't know the story at all Jim Lee does the covers on these two and I think I recently picked up issue number one Maybe that was at like Pulp Comics or something like that, but uh, I found two more issues in that run. And the, the colors are great, the art is great, and it's just reminiscent of that, you know, early to mid 90s kind of a period. So couldn't pass those up for just 50 cents a piece. And then this next set of books is the last set that comes from Midway Books this day. And this was one of those examples of, I wasn't looking for this when I went in, but wound up picking them up because it was right there in front of me. And so I had to grab them. These books all come from X-Men. It's either volume two or volume three, depending on how you, you, you know, count them. So X-Men volume one technically was the Jim Lee volume that started in 1991. And that ran for 207 issues. Then it was retitled, but the numbering continued and became X-Men Legacy from issue 208 to like 275, something like that. And then after that ended, once X-Men adjectiveless uh, started up again, it was a new volume, a new number one. And that's a volume, it ran for 41 issues. And this is one where I've never really been actively seeking to complete it. But it seems like over time, I've pieced together more and more of the run. And this day of hunting got me to within where there's just one issue left that I need. And it's because they had so many issues from this run and all in good shape. And the price was right at 50 cents. So here's all the holes except for one that I was able to fill on this day. Here's 15.1, 23, 29, Got a, a vampire jubilee. And I'm familiar with the fact that Jubilee spent a lot of time as a vampire. She's not anymore, but I've never read that story. So eventually I'm looking forward to being able to read all of this and, and get the background there. 27. I like that cover. 29. 30. 32. 33, 34, I like that with Psylocke, Domino, and Pixie there. And then lastly, 39, tough looking Domino cover. So that was a good chunk of the volume that they had all in stock. They were, as you see them, no bags, no boards, but they, I got really lucky that they're still in really good shape and they haven't been, you know, ripped up here from people flipping through them and things like that. And at this point now, there's just one issue left. It may be I don't even know what issue it is offhand. I'd have to check my CLZ. It's something in the 30s. But with that, I now only need one more issue to complete this entire volume. And so kind of not real aggressively, but somewhat passively, I've picked up this entire volume. So sometimes that happens in collecting too, right? But now I'll be able to, to read the whole thing once I get that last issue. And 
Next, we're gonna go over to a store called Comic Book College. I mentioned them in my last video and I'll have links to Comic Book College and all the other stores that I mentioned in this video down below in the description. So if you wanna check out their social media accounts or websites and things like that, you can do that. And at Comic Book College this day, this was a result of diving in their 50 cent and dollar bins. Usually I look up the price I paid for each of these things before I filmed the video and I, I don't remember offhand, but you can know that as you look at these, these were all either 50 cents or a dollar a piece. And I think when I started just recently collecting this Superman Batman volume, and because I show you hauls out of order sometimes, I think these issues actually represent the first issues that I found once I decided to collect this volume. So I picked up issue two, issue 14, 15. And in this case, it may be that the bagless issues were 50 cents and the bagged ones were a dollar. Don't recall. 17. And then jumping way ahead to 56. And normally when I'm collecting a large run where I have, you know, this is like an 87 issue volume where I'm starting from scratch and trying to put it together. I'll try to break it off into logical pieces, maybe the first 10 issues, then 11 to 20 and things like that and do it in bites. But when they're just 50 cents a piece, I'll take whatever's there because then I can, you know, it's cheap enough. I, I won't worry about going in any particular order. So that's why you get that kind of crazy jump from issue 17 to issue 56. Kind of a random one-off. I uh, just bought this for the cover. I thought it was uh, cool pink background it's from the 80s you know this 50 cent cover price on this superman presents the krypton chronicles so i guess he's going to go into i think i read this it wasn't terribly exciting but i think it's like clark kent has to do some story or whatever but he winds up going i don't know if he goes to candor or what but um yeah then he's trying to do this whole Krypton Chronicles. I think it was like a three issue limited series, but like I said, it was 50 cents. It just seemed kind of fun. So I grabbed it. And then the last book I got from comic book college that day is this Fearless Defenders number one. Fellow YouTuber and comic collector Eric Spagnuolo is the one who turned me on to this 12 issue series with almost all of the covers I, done, I think are done by Mark Brooks. And now I have, actually, I'm only about halfway there, but this was like the second issue I found. I think I found number two first and then number one. And then in a recent video, I showed you another four or so issues that I put together that may have been at a 25 cent sale. But this is one of those kind of things that I'm gonna collect when I can find them real cheap. Uh, I'll be patient on that one. But that wraps it up for Comic Book College. Next, we go over to a store called Issues Needed Comics. They're located in the town of Apple Valley, Minnesota. It's about 30 minutes south of the Twin Cities. And another great local shop. They've been in business for, what, five, six years now? I'm kind of guesstimating how long they've been in business. But the owner's name is Jason and uh, it's really been fun to watch that show kind of deepen its inventory over time. When they first opened, it was primarily new issues and, you know, very few, if any, back issues. And they also sold, you know, Magic the Gathering, Pokemon, other types of, you know, card and, and role-playing games. And then over time, they've just acquired collections and added to their back issue selection. And now it's one of my favorite local shops to go into from an ambiance perspective you walk in and i love that smell of comic book store it's just a real unique smell and it's wall to wall to wall to wall floor to ceiling it's just there's stuff everywhere and i mean that in the most positive way there's so many long boxes to look through there you know shelves of collected editions and he's got still the real active magic the gathering community and pokemon and other kinds of gaming and competitions that they have so happy to see that store doing well but I, I love the feel of that store and issues needed has several long boxes where they have recent back issues that they'll sell at two dollars a piece and they're not bagged and boarded it looks a lot like it's overstock things that didn't sell but 
You can find some variants in there sometimes. You can find issues of runs that you need to fill in. So I make sure to, to make a trip down there periodically to go rummaging through at least those $2 bins. And they do have some dollar bins as well. Uh, but this is what I found on this day. First, this uh, number one in the six part limited series called History of the Marvel Universe. Not a, you know, a story in the traditional sense. It's kind of summarizing the history of the Marvel Universe. And it's told from the perspective of Galactus and Franklin Richards, where, here they are, Franklin Richards, Galactus, the end of time. And I think the universe is about to end. And he said, well, before it does, can you tell me the story again? Um, of, you know, tell me the story of everything. He says, before I go, help me remember. Remember what? Everything. Very well. And then you go through. So these are, have always been fun types of approaches where it retells the story of the Marvel Comics universe. Back in the 80s, it was a series called Marvel Saga that told that perspective of here's how everything happened, the formation of the X-Men, the Avengers, and all those kind of things. That was like a 25-issue run. I put that together. But these have always been fun. And so this was the last issue I needed because I didn't buy any of them new. I got them all as back issues. And so I picked that up for $2 and it originally had a cover price of $4.99. Secondly, I picked up this issue 309 of Spectacular Spider-Man. This is from the most recent volume. I don't think there's one going right now, but it was the most recent volume uh, written by Chip Zdarsky and issue 308 and 309 are a two-part story penciled by Chris Boccolo. And you've heard me say, if you've been watching my videos, that I really like Chris Boccolo's style. And so I've been hunting for these. And now I have this two-part story. And uh, really, really glad to have found to have found this. And now I can, now I can read this two-part story. So that was a, a fun little find. And surprisingly, it took me a very long time to find those. I did not see them very often. Return of the Valkyries. This is the Black History Month variant. I love the colors on that. that. That's a big draw for me. But I did want this issue. This is an issue I collected or a little mini series that I've been working on as part of the, the continuation of Jane Foster's story. Because, you know, many people know she was the Mighty Thor for a while. And the Mighty Thor went on to become Valkyrie. And so there's been a, a couple of different limited series. Some of them... Uh, tied into other events and things, but where it's kind of following not just Jane Foster, but the Valkyrie story. So this was part of that limited series that I've been working on. And then lastly, from Issues Needed, this is a 99 cent comic. This is Ghost Rider 2099, issue number eight. And this, like that Spider-Man book, this is because of the Chris Boccolo art. I think he just does the cover. I don't think he does the pencils on this. Kyle Hotz or Hotz, H-O-T-Z, does the art in here. And I don't know anything about this storyline. Honestly, I don't even know that I'd really recognize that quickly as a Chris Boccolo cover, but it is his work. So I wanted to add that to my library of Chris Boccolo artistic credits. Lastly, fourth store of four, this was um, a trip I made to a store called Hot Comics and Collectibles. They've got multiple locations. You've heard me mention them most frequently when their Jordan location does the 25 cent sidewalk sales, but this is actually from their Richfield store. And I don't get to that store very often. It's just not within the circle of you know where I go on a daily basis. But I had a day where I had an opportunity. I was close and had some time to kill. So I thought, why not? Let me go to the Richfield store. And they've got a deep selection of back issues as well. But they have at the back of the store, uh, you know, what is it? 10, 15 long boxes of books that are marked at a dollar. But they're also, you'll see on the next one, if you buy seven, then you get them for $5. So you get like a discount if you buy a little bit more. And so I went in there and, you know, I, there was a smattering of things here and there, but I was able to piece together seven issues that I thought looked interesting to me and get them for $5. The first one is this issue eight of Cyber Force. This may be the first 
copy I picked up of this issue eight, but it may be the second. I don't remember off the top of my head. I do have a couple of them now. I got it for two reasons. One, I'm going back and collecting some of the early image books and this filled in that hole. I didn't have issue eight before, but second, it's a Todd McFarlane cover, which is pretty cool. So this is McFarlane after Mark and I am completely blanking on what this is an homage to. So I'll put a I'll put a little text blurb down below of what the original is that he's homaging here. Is that Mark Silvestri he's homaging? Um, so that's that's the second reason. And I've gotten a couple copies of this now when I could get them for fifty cents or a buck. It's just fun. Todd McFarlane's popular cover art and his stuff's only going to go up in price. So figure get them while I can while they're cheap and maybe make somebody smile if you give a nice Todd McFarlane cover. So. Next up now we go to this Gen X, which I had never heard of before, but it's written by Chris Claremont. And I think it was like a five or six issue limited run. And the basic gist of this story is what would be happening in the lives of the X-Men if they aged in real time. So I think that the characters that are focused on here are actually the next generation like children of the original X-Men era of characters. So I figured, what the heck, why not? This is issue number one. Sounds like a cool story premise. So I'll try to put this together. And I think I might have one other issue since then, but I still have, still have ways to go to, to round this out and complete this volume. Then we've got another Chris Bacalo inspired purchase here. He does the cover of this four part limited series or the covers for this four part limited series focused on the character of Chamber. And yeah, I guess that's about all I have to say. Chamber was part of Generation X or Generation Next and Chris Bacalo did the covers for this. So there you go. Fantastic Four, number one, not volume one, but volume four of Fantastic Four. And this is a volume that just recently I've added to my wish list to collect. It only went like 16 or so issues, somewhere in the teens. And Mark Bagley did the art for most of it. And so I figured I like the Fantastic Four. I like Mark Bagley. So why not? I'll add this to my wish list. And I think before I got this issue one, I had picked up issue two for pretty cheap. And then back at that 25 cent sidewalk sale uh, that Hot Comics did for free comic book day, I got like five or six issues. So I think I'm more than halfway there now of this, having this whole volume. But I've said this about Fantastic Four in other videos that there have been certain runs historically that I've wanted to collect, but this title and this family of characters continues to grow on me. And so uh, my wish list is ever expanding. So it, it just keep adding new volumes uh, to my wish list to have more and more Fantastic Four comic books. Next up here, I don't really even know anything about this. Maybe I saw the cover and thought it was cool. This is Wildstorm and it's called Sky Runner, but I really don't know. <laughs> I really don't know anything about this. <laughs> it's a number one. Um, I don't think I got it simply to have a, you know, a seventh issue, but maybe I just got caught up in the nineties nostalgia of Wildstorm image creator owned stuff and figured I'd buy this. I do like fantasy stories. So that could be, uh, that could be it. Alan Warner is the writer and do you pronounce it Ali Garza? A-L-E with the uh, symbol over the top there. But yeah, so if you know anything about Skyrunner, let me know because I can't remember any real, you know, deep reason why I picked this up. It just looked kind of cool. Then we've got Youngblood, another early image title. This is issue number four. This one I do remember. My brother collected Youngblood for the first couple of issues and then he stopped collecting and now going back, I figure, ah, why not? I'll, I'll get some of the Young Bloods. They're still cheap. And so I grabbed issue number four of Young Blood. And let me see if that, the uh, double cover, I shouldn't say double cover because that implies something else. Oh no. You know, for some of the early issues, you had a cover art on the front and the back where it was kind of like a flip cover. But this looks like you do get art on the back. 
but a little bit different than what you saw in the first couple issues. This blood's for you. And then lastly, one more book to show you here. This is title called Out There, and the creator is Umberto Ramos, and he does the art, and this is his art on the issue number one. He's another artist that I came to know primarily through his works on Spider-Man, and he did some things, gosh, there were other titles I think I've read that he, he was drawing, but he did most or all of the Strange Academy title that's been very, very popular recently, but I thought... You know, here's issue one for less than a dollar, and I'll go ahead and pick that up. I think this volume only ran for 14, 18 issues. It's not terribly long. And I have, since I got this issue one, gotten the first like six issues. I got a variant of this and then, and then issues two through, two through six. And so I've started reading this story and basically the gist is this town is a nice, quiet, peaceful town where everybody lives by, you know, a cert, you know, they're all good people and nothing bad ever happens here, but that's because they've made a deal with some demonic influence. And so they're, they're keeping the town safe by having sold their, their uh, communal souls to, <laughs> to the demon. And I think he's working on, you know, bringing his physical presence back into reality and taking over. And this group of kids, is able to see them and is not, you know, they're not falling for it. So I think they get kind of looped in to uh, to deal with this threat. And this girl, she's kind of the, the awkward outcast. He's kind of the young, smart, you know, kind of genius nerd. And then he's like a, you know, captain of the football team type and she's a cheerleader. So you got the cool kids, the outcast and the nerd, and they all wind up teaming up to fight back against this uh, demonic threat. So it seems kind of interesting. So we'll, we'll give it a read. And like I said, when, when you're finding stories for 50 cents or a dollar a piece, it's kind of nice because you can read things. And if you like it, great. And if you don't like it so much, well, that's fine too because you didn't spend, you know, a ton of money to get that story. But there's just so many good stories out there. And with that issue though, that wraps up my haul. All right, that's going to do it for me. And that's going to wrap up this back issue haul, showing you the books I got from multiple Minneapolis-based merchants. How do you like that for some alliteration? Anyway, how are things going for you out in the wild? What kinds of back issues are you finding in the dollar bins, 50 cent bins, or none of the above kind of bins? Just what kinds of cool things are you finding in your own hunting? Let me know down below. Now, if you're not quite ready for the YouTube fun to stop, I have hand selected a couple videos here for you to check out. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.